Hey team, it's time to review an early career designer's portfolio. I'm Megan Thomas, and I'm a senior UX designer with over nine years of experience, mostly in enterprise software, but also with startups. And I've also done a lot of contract work, so I've seen companies big and small. I've also taught three cohorts of the UX UI bootcamp at UC Berkeley, a six month slash 24 week UX UI bootcamp where we go through UX research, UX design, UI design, information architecture, web development, all of it, you name it. I've had the privilege of teaching and mentoring over 300 early career designers as they make a career shift into the UX industry. I'm particularly excited about mentoring early career designers and I started this portfolio review series because I don't see anything like it out there. My goal with this review is to share my impression of the portfolio, what I see as a senior designer, and give some actionable feedback for things that you can do to improve your portfolio as you look for a job in the UX industry. I do this in a very stream of consciousness kind of way. I share my screen. It's like a cognitive walkthrough. I will talk through what I see and what I'm thinking as I go through at least one case study. Now remember, my opinion is just mine. And I think you should get at least three opinions on your portfolio before making any major changes. I would also love to encourage any designer of any level to weigh in on this video and on my portfolio review, because I think this is how we learn together. I believe a rising tide lifts all boats, so let's succeed together. All right, with that, let's get started. Hey friends, all right, today we're going to review the portfolio of Grant Sawyer. So Grant, thank you so much for volunteering to have your portfolio reviewed. Hopefully you have already seen a couple of my recordings and you know that I'm not here to tear you down. I am definitely here to lift you up and hopefully give you some actionable feedback that you can use to refine your portfolio. Let's get started. So when I first click through to IamGrantSawyer.com, I, first of all, I love that. I think that is useful even if you don't stay in the UX world. We should all have our personal branding. So I am Grant Sawyer. Really nice. Uh, I love this color change background. Like that's my personal vibe. So I, I love the aura effect. I hope it is like compressed nicely in terms of, of animation and like what is what is happening here. I'm going to make assumptions that you have probably just used a like a module or some, some sort of JavaScript um, script that you're pulling from another website. So you didn't probably code all of this yourself, which is great. Um, it's a cute little back to top over here. All right. You've got about you UX UI portfolio. This is interesting that we are dropped on the main page, but it's like the second item in the navigation. That's a little confusing for information architecture. So I'm going to click around. We'll see if there's anything else that that sticks out, but this is interesting. Okay. Other projects, qualifications, and blogs. So we've got a few case studies. I'm going to say at first glance, this feels a little small. It feels it feels like we're trying to stay real small and not get too splashy. So that is totally fine, but it feels like you could probably make more of an impact. This is a very quiet hello. Uh, and maybe when we're looking for jobs, we want to we want to have a quiet hello but we might also want to make a little bit bigger of a splash. What's impressive about you? Also, if this is the homepage, I am grantsawyer.com and it says UX UI portfolio, give me your name. I know everyone's really tired of like the little wave emoji and hi, I'm so-and-so, but give me something interesting. So you've got some featured projects here and that's great. I don't know which one I want to claim into. So the Philly Chai, CHI uh, Computer Human Interaction group, something like that. Uh, UX Design Slam. At this event, I helped a group called Mighty Writers reach new audiences. Freelance, I worked with a client to build a website for a nonprofit geared towards lifting people out of poverty. Well, I know what I'm going to do. And then this is a general assembly project, a freelance project where you helped work on a UX audit for productions.com. Now, a UX audit sounds interesting. Okay, so first of all, this should be bigger because those are really good project blurbs. Like, I am excited about both of these. I feel like this could also be a logo. If you're going to go with here's productions.com, this should all wait. If that's got a hover effect, these should have a hover effect too. And in order to just kind of give a cohesive theme, I guess show me a logo for the, the Philly Chai, Kai, Kai Fu, I think is a, a thing around here. So now I'm like, oh, do I know this group or not? Um, consider making these feel more cohesive. 
a freelance project on a UX audit. I'm going to click on that. Ah, first, I was going to look at other projects. What do we got? Okay, wait a second. You have a ton of case studies. Why are these not? So these are your featured projects on the other page, but not here. Wait a second. Excuse you. So this is, I'm assuming this is a class project or a general assembly project. As someone, as a someone, so as someone, fix that little extra A, decided to come up with a way for its public transportation system to better itself. Oh, okay. So you're good at writing um, blurbs. This is very compelling. I'm confused why this isn't included on your UX UI portfolio. Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority. Okay, so this the content needs to be refined, um, but you've got the goal, the problem statement. I want a little bit more detail to um, the competitive analysis. We need to refine this. Wait, why? That's your that's your navigation. That's weird. Sorry. Okay, so. I love that your resume is on here. I also love that your LinkedIn profile is front and center. However, it is impossible to read this document. So it is going to be, aw, writing a reference letter. That's amazing. Okay, so download file. And then you've got CL Grant Connect and Serve on a website content plan. This is great, but this is not a helpful page on the website. I... I'm trying to speak carefully here because I don't, again, I don't want to um, put this down, but qualifications isn't a tab that I typically see on a lot of uh, portfolio websites. And it's not that it's inappropriate, but it feels like qualifications would be more appropriate if, um, like I'm thinking of an academic higher education kind of experience. Like I'm a professor of sociology and my qualifications are that I have taught at these universities. I have delivered these um, books. I have written these journals that are published in these well-known uh, journals of science and medicine or whatever. Like those are qualifications that are helpful. This is more of an about me, but then I see there's an about page. So hi, welcome to I am grantsawyer.com. I got into UXUI. Medium, I love that you're writing. You want to see my graphic design work. This is good. This about page and the qualifications page probably should be consolidated. So I love that you're, it's very handsome picture. This is really like, this is a perfect professional picture. You've got a very short blurb about who you are and what you do. This is a great size. Combine this with your uh, resume. And honestly, you don't need to show a picture of it. Just give me the download file. Like you could have that button and have that open and that's it. That's perfect. This, uh, this looks kind of like, uh, you should pull these out as screenshots. And, um, if this is someone giving feedback on the work that you did, which is what this looks like, I would pull this out and not embed this as a document. Um, but that's, this is all important. You could create your own case study using this information. If you want to cite it, put this document in your Google Drive and link to that, um, that PDF URL. You don't need to embed it, but like this is important. This right here, you can barely see it. So another reason is that nobody's going to see this. Most people aren't going to dig in like me, but right here, Connect and Serve is, it, is in its first year as a nonprofit and everyone who hears about our vision believes in its success. This is the first project posted to catch a fire by Connect and Serve. And I want to know what total saved means I can't like link to that. I kind of want to find this on Connect Deserve, but total saved. If that is something that you helped contribute to, that is a metric for your resume. In fact, your resume better be, better include that. Black owned business index. Yes, love. Premineo tech. All right. Formatting is a little weird here. Let's, let's figure this out. UX designer connect and serve. How did you get this um, number? Save the client $1,636. That's really specific. I want to know what that means. Um, you've saved them money by designing mock-ups. How is that? Grant, I kind of want to like, say, ah, you made a tic-tac-toe game. Oh, sorry. I got, I just got super distracted. I also wrote a tic-tac-toe game in JavaScript a very, very long time ago and mine sucked. I, it was hard. Um, 
Okay, this is super fun. And you need to have links to all this stuff. Uh, this showcased ability to be collaborative. All right, Grant, we have got to tighten up your resume. Four pages is too long. You do not need to include a letter of recommendation, although I absolutely love that. This can be way more tightened up. Also, you have a Bachelor of Fine Arts and Associates in Arts. All of this is helpful. We need to get a resume writer to make this tighter. Um, but you've already got good information on here, so don't stress out. This is good enough to, uh, to share. All right, I got way too deep on the qualifications page. I I feel like I'm going to be a little ADHD going through your website because I am really excited. So these are design exercises and you've created case studies for them. I want to know what this is like. Second observation, right-hand side navigation is, I'm going to personally say that's a no. It is not a typical UI design pattern. So anyone who comes in looking to hire you and is looking for UI design best practices, um, information architecture, usability, this does not convey that. So you're already undermining yourself with all of these amazing projects. You shouldn't be using uh, practices for UI patterns that aren't best practices. Uh, I'm beating around the bush. Don't do this. This is what I should just say. Navigation on the right is weird and unfamiliar, but I like it. Um, I like I like the page. I don't like the right-hand navigation. That's strange. Low fidelity wireframes. So on another portfolio review, I called this out. Calculator sketches, totally helpful. Give context. Why'd you make a sketch? What did the sketch help you decide to do when you moved into low fidelity wireframes? These low fidelity wireframes, again, what is what are you trying to convey? with these wireframes, although this is not one of your big UX design things. So like I should just move on, but interesting and also really powerful that you made a ton of small case studies. That's fantastic. Editorial systems class, worked with a friend to help build a website, which would help people figure out how they can clean the planet. What? Did you build this website? This is so cute. Is this just an Instagram feed or is it images, customer reviews, send a carrier pigeon? That's cute. Um, feels like we could include more information here. But if you built this website, that's fantastic. Um, really, really interesting. Really want to see this. Netflix, a UX case study. Be together by watching TV shows and movies together. Interesting that we're using graphics. I don't hate it. What did we do? Awesome. Um, give me a couple of details. Nate handled the com competitive analysis and user interviews. Tiago and I handled the user surveys and I handled, I would say conducted. Handled is a little bit like um, just more casual parlance. Uh, I would use, we conducted, we uh, provided, we go look for Bloom's taxonomy of verbs. And that will help you understand. Um, there's basically a grid and it talks about like, what are you demonstrating the knowledge or understanding of? Like, how can you demonstrate you grasped the concepts? And then it gives you a bunch of verbs that help you go, oh, I conducted the user surveys because handled means, what does that mean? I passed it off. I delegated. I conducted them. I uh, arranged for them. I set up appointments. I searched for users. What'd you do? Uh, user surveys, pull these out, um, bring maybe three bullet points. Don't include images that we cannot actually um, see. Is this a whole image? That looks like a whole image. Okay. Um, so tighten up, recreate the information in images. Also, it feels like everything's crammed into the center of the screen. Is my website too big? All right. So this isn't one of your priority projects. So I feel bad that I'm just like wandering off onto the side, but graphic design portfolio. Okay, this is, wait, what? Interesting. All right, we gotta work on your case studies, but these are your older ones. So I am not going to, to, to dive in too far. These are the featured projects that you want us to judge you on. Um, sorry, not judge, but like, Judge your skills for a job. So this is a freelance project, productions.com, collaborated with two other teammates. What's going on here? Why is it, 
Why is it pushed over to the left? If anything, I would do the about and make it the full width of this space in the center. Not sure why we have a compressed image, but don't drag images to make them compress. Keep the scale um, and just make them a little bit smaller. Wants to facilitate the process of hiring film crews with diverse backgrounds and top-notch talent. The plan. This is interesting um, layout. The hierarchy and the, um, the, just the visual layout is a little strange. I also want to double check. For me, this feels fine with the white text on the blue background. I would double check the color contrast. Uh, the blue is really luminous, so it's probably fine, but double check that. All right, so we've got screenshots of competitive analysis and user survey. I love the problem statement, personas, pain points, sketches. Why does he look so mad? Beautiful, but mad. Flow for Ellen, UX flow. No, okay, so this is too small to read. What is a hiring manager supposed to get out of this image when you have it so small and I can't click on it and make it bigger? They need to know that you made a user flow and there's a reason for it. So first I want to see some context. What is this, what is Ellen trying to accomplish? And what is Jorge trying to accomplish? What are we doing and why did we create these user flows? So more important than any images on your portfolio is context. It is literally one of my core values. Context matters. I even, in fact, had a very frustrating experience this past week where I failed to provide context and what I received back from someone was not expected. And so context is important. And right now, what I'm getting is as a hiring manager, I'm not seeing that you're communicating your thoughts. I'm not seeing that you're doing things for a reason. Why? What's the why for any of the steps that you've taken here? Figma link for productions.com. I would have that open in a new window. So you're going to want to put target equals um, quotes underscore blank in between those quotes. And that will have, um, that's just an A, uh, add that parameter to the anchor tag and it'll open in a new tab. Good job taking off the, um, oh, there's no way to go back. Interesting. What do I do here? All right. Okay, it's just, two, oh, two, a couple of flows, different forms. All right, these are low fidelity, and I don't really understand what's going on there. Oh, and see what happened is because it didn't open in a new tab, I didn't click the back button, and um, now I don't know how to get back to your website. All right, case study. So that opened in a, a new tab. So Ellen Kitt, the producer, she wants to find short-term contract work or she wants to find someone to hire for short-term contract work. Apply for new positions. Okay. This also, like, I'm getting the idea that this is an image. What's going on here? Is this an image? It is. Oh, gosh, the whole thing's an image. Oh. Well, that explains a couple things. All right, so this is kind of like an infographic on a web page. I feel like you've got some room to do some real refinement here, Grant. Um, the picture, it's very um, Behance or Dribble. It's very visually based, but that is not telling me that you understand the basics of web accessibility. So it's super clear. I appreciate that this whole um, picture is easy to read. That's usually the biggest problem. Um, but this website actually needs to be more accessible than that. And um, I, I know that there are not a lot of hiring managers out here using screen readers and um, with color vision deficiency, but that's an assumption that we're making. That is not reality. 20% of the world has some form of disability. So we need to make sure that we're accounting for that. And you're making some broad assumptions about the ability of the people who come to your website. Let me check out the freelance, since I know that this was a real one you did on Catch a Fire, which is fantastic. I feel like I'm gonna discover that this is also an image. Nope, okay. Connect and Serve is an upcoming nonprofit organization geared towards helping those in poverty achieve financial independence from a holistic standpoint. It aims to do this by helping people address everything affecting their financial status, including but not limited to their neighborhoods, education, spending habits, and everything in between. 
All right, so we've got some website sketches. Whenever I sketch what the final outcome of something is going to look like, I'm not necessarily looking to sketch every single detail. However, I do need to sketch enough material to get a good idea of how the project should look. Okay, that's actually a very helpful piece of information when we're looking at some like low, low, low fidelity sketches. I also do that. I just need to get the idea out to understand what steps I need to take next. So that's good. First website draft. Okay, so I went with green because it deals with things such as growth and financial freedom. I like that. You understand a little bit about color theory. Also created the menu navigation. I didn't create the logo, but I did reformat it into a circle and put it next to the menu navigation. Okay. Now it's interesting that you have the home over here on the navigation on the right hand side. Typically that is either connected to the logo going to the home page or home is the most farthest left because we're an English speaking country all of our content is read from left to right so the biggest most important page on the website is always the home page in terms of navigation that's your top level navigation the end slash of the website I'm pointing at like the the, the slash in the URL if it's just dot com slash that is your home page and it is the top level of your navigation so it should be kind of at the top left of the page. Anything other than that should, um, in priority order, moved from left to right. What's interesting here is contact us might be something that they absolutely need, but donate is probably something you want to call out. If this is a donation-based website, if this is a nonprofit that exists on donations, you're going to want to make it the biggest, most important priority. The biggest call to action on the website should be donate money to our, our cause. Just like a for-profit business is mostly trying to sell you something, probably a product or a service, their number one call to action is buy this, call now. So let's make sure that a nonprofit gets the most impactful design that you possibly can do. And by, I would swap the home and donate. So home goes here about frequently asked questions and contact us is a very logical form of um, menu navigation or uh, information organization on a website. And then this final thing on the right hand side should be donate and it should probably be I'm thinking because everything is white text on a green background, it should be a white button with donate and big green letters, all capitalized. And that should be the biggest call to action in that navigation bar. I'm liking it so far and I appreciate the decisions that you're making. I also wanna know a little bit more about what did the customer want? Second website draft, okay. Sample of what the first draft of the website looked like. I removed the green because the client felt green was too reminiscent of brands dealing with climate change. That's fair. I also created the menu navigation. I didn't create the logo, but I did reformat. This feels like a rehash of what happened over here. This is also the second draft and not the first draft. So I think maybe we copied some language and didn't edit. Also, I wanna say we've got the, the navigation in black, but then home is in gray. What's going on? our vision, what we do. All right, so even on client websites, we need to make sure that we're using appropriate color contrast. So this is, we're heading into, where do I, how, how do I wanna start? We have already started as a culture, as a community, as a humanity. We're starting to move into a, a generation of digital accessibility requirements. So the WCAG, the web content accessibility guidelines have already been adjusted. They have been updated yearly. There is an entire like consortium that meets and talks about how to make sure the web is accessible. And uh, one of the basics is color contrast. So I would definitely look out the uh, look for the web aim. I think it is color contrast checker because the white on a very light tan background or even maybe an olive green, uh, that's not contrast enough. So that's not as helpful. I would definitely bring maybe some more of that green of the branding in here, maybe outline it. Maybe that's the color and the background is white. Um, it doesn't all have to be like one tone, but it does need to be readable. And also without being able to zoom in and look at this, I will say that your, um, your checkbox here, there's too many words. Either there needs to be additional checkboxes or that needs to be refined into something that is more communicative. Right now, it just feels like someone's gonna click it if they have to, but they aren't gonna read it. 
So we've got a little bit of an older web style here with the uh, kind of floating chunks on like a plain background. I'm assuming these kind of float up over it and it feels a little disconnected and not cohesive. So if this image is to go with this title and with this text, I would probably put the box all around all of that so that it stays as one unit of information and not a bunch of disparate pieces of information. Facts about poverty. So it looks like we're using Wix. I love that you've gotten screenshots here. I'd probably edit them a little bit so that it just looks like a website, maybe put them into a, um, a mock-up generator kind of thing. User feedback surveys, surveys. The client was having issues with the site and so I decided to get some outside feedback. What can be done? Then how it was at the time. Okay, so this is smart. Although again, we're, we're just using screenshots of documents online that's not interesting or compelling so give me some maybe a cartoon image of a person or an actual image of a person and the quote that they had or just call out the three most important quotes that you found but this this is giving I don't know what's important so I'm just gonna word barf into your lap and a hiring manager wants to know that you have the ability to discern information that's important and only convey the most important information no one's gonna read all this Third and final, whoa, this has changed a lot, but I'm loving what you got here. Again, adjust some of these images. Like nobody wants to see all your tabs open. That's not, it's actually really distracting. Uh, so draft, connect and serve. Okay, we've changed the logo. We've changed the format. I'm loving what you've done. It looks like you used a really quality um, Wix template. I love it. Uh, feels... Maybe like this got zoomed in a little bit too far, but I love that we've got the huge donate button. Good job. Connect and serve. I'm going to open this up in a new tab and let's check it out. Hey, this is good. I'm loving this. Be part of our mission powered by Poptin. Nice. All right. Good effort. Testimonials. This feels good. So again, this should go to the home and it does about us, our partners, testimonials, how to apply, support us, ways to support, donate, and then we have donate in the corner. Maybe bring this uh, white header down just a little bit to fully encompass uh, and close that button. But overall, this is looking really fantastic. I would like to know a little bit more about what happened and the decisions made between um, this iteration, getting feedback, and then how you made decisions for the final draft. Because this is apparently what has like become the website, I want to know how you did this. I want to know, um, is it, did you, sorry, I got distracted by the, um, what's the spacing between letters? That was really distracting. I want to know how you made the decisions that you made. So the fact that you did the work, this is you showing the work. I want to know why you did the work. What feedback did you take? Who did you talk to? What made you say, change your mind? What made you decide to put this on the website rather than that? So I love the approach you've taken. This is a really quality um, case study. You've clearly done some work and you've done it with a real company, which is fantastic. This uh, portfolio case study needs to be tightened up a lot, but I think it's going to be a really good quality uh, portfolio project for you to show off. This is awesome. Grant, I'm super impressed, especially if you did General Assembly. I don't know how that course is run. I only know about the course that I taught in. Um, and if you did this, especially without a ton of mentorship, this is really exceptional work. There's a long way to go, but you are doing a great job. You are clearly learning. You're clearly growing. And I'm loving this. Great job. All right. That is Grant Sawyer's portfolio review. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please connect with Grant on LinkedIn. This is essentially these uh, portfolio reviews are meant so that I can help early career designers grow their networks and maybe find work. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. Connect with Grant on LinkedIn. Connect with me on LinkedIn. And uh, even though I hate saying it, it's super icky, but like, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I would love to see you again soon. Have a great day.